Good morning, and welcome once again to the Television Mass, coming to you live from the studios of TCN9 here in Sydney. Every year on November the 2nd, the Church sets aside this day to remember and pray for all those who have died. It's an ancient custom, and it dates to pre-Christian days. We know it as All Souls Day, and it reminds us that we all belong to an extended family of those still living and those who've gone before us. The prayers, hymns, and readings of the Mass today speak about the mystery of Christian death. Our faith tells us that just as Christ was born in Bethlehem, and baptized in the Jordan, died on Calvary, and rose again on the third day, so we are born again in the spirit at baptism, signed with his promise, and one day will die to be risen with him and the Father forever. We are sons and daughters by adoption and heirs to his kingdom. We look on death as the beginning of life with him, not as the end of our existence on earth. The symbol of the risen Christ is the paschal candle, burning with a flame that shows the light of Christ, the candle that is lit during the final farewell by the church in the liturgy of the deceased. Well, this morning gives us great pleasure to welcome Father Kevin English and the Maroubra Bay folk singers and the families from the parish of Maroubra. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and the peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. We come today to pray for our departed brothers and sisters, to ask that the Lord will bless them and reward them with eternal life. We come to hear the word of God and to share in the bread of life. But for this we are unworthy and sinful. So we pause and call to mind our sins. Lord, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. And you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, 
Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, you are the glory of believers and the life of the just. Your Son redeemed us by dying and rising to life again. And since our departed brothers and sisters believed in the mystery of our resurrection, let them share the joys and blessings of the life to come. We make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Reading reminds us that even though death seems to end our life on earth, the faithful ones will live with the Lord in truth. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. No torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the unwise, they did appear to die. Their going looked like a disaster. They're leaving us like annihilation, but they are in peace. If they experienced punishment as men see it, their hope was rich with immortality. Slight was their affliction, great will their blessings be. God has put them to the test and proved them worthy to be with him. He has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a holocaust. They who trust in him will understand the truth. Those who are faithful will, will live with him in love for grace and mercy await those he has chosen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. shepherd is the Lord, nothing indeed shall I want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. He guides me along the right path, he is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff, with these you give me comfort. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. My shepherd is the Lord. Nothing indeed shall I want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. My shepherd is the Lord, nothing indeed shall I want. In the second reading, St. Paul tells the Romans about the mystery of Christ passing through the tomb to his resurrection. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized in his death. In other words, when we were baptized, we went into the tomb with him and joined him in death. So that as Christ was raised from the dead by the Father's glory, we too might live a new life. If in union with Christ we have imitated his death, 
we shall also imitate him in his resurrection. We must realize that our former selves have been crucified with him to destroy the sinful body and to free us from the slavery of sin. When a man dies, of course, he has finished with sin. But we believe that having died with Christ, we shall return to life with him. Christ, as we know, having been raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no power over him anymore. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. If we die with Christ, we shall live with him. And if we are faithful to the end, we shall reign with him. Alleluia. The gospel gives us the words of Jesus about heaven and the way to reach it. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If there were not, I should not have told you. I am going now to prepare a place for you. And after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate the feast of all souls. Yesterday we celebrated the feast of all saints. And the two days are great church days because they remind us that we are one family of God. Yesterday, thinking of the saints in heaven, we remember that they are our brothers and sisters, living with the Lord in glory, helping us by their intercession and by their prayers. Today, the church looks at another part of God's family, our brothers and sisters who have died. And while not yet officially saints, we still think of them as our brothers and sisters called by the Lord to be saints. And so while they don't get official mention on the feast of all saints, we pray especially for them today. This feast day brings us face to face with the reality of death. It's a reality that no one can escape. And if we look back over the past ages of man, the great civilizations of man, we see the story of man's growth in knowledge and understanding. Man from the very beginning asking the big questions, trying to find the answers to the riddles of life. And so the great philosophers of the past and the great civilizations of the past have asked the question about what is life? What is truth? What is beauty? What is goodness? What is justice? What is matter? And what is death? And we witness through those civilizations of man a great progression in man's knowledge and understanding of himself. And we see that he has come to understand the great mysteries of his life. But the one fact that was always a stumbling block was the reality of death. We saw some attempts on the past ages of man to answer that riddle. We see the Egyptian Empire, for example, 
burying their kings and queens in the great tombs, but burying with them servants and utensils and food for the afterlife. And so it seems that in the heart of man there's some sense that there is more to death than just the decay and the end of the body. But nevertheless, man could never find a satisfactory answer to the fact of death. No man could until Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ came and he said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. He came to tell us about life. He said, I've come that you might have life and have it to the full. We could probably say he was the first life be in it campaigner. And not just ordinary life, but life that will last forever. Jesus came to be a man like us in all things, to suffer our human lot, to know about pain and rejection and sadness and sorrow and disappointment. A man like us in all things. And being a man like us, he too suffered death. But he of all men overcame death rose from the dead and rose to eternal life and our faith in him gives us the promise and the pledge and the certainty of that eternal life and so Jesus has taken away the fear of death and the fear of the unknown for those of us who believe in Jesus Christ the Lord death is but a passing stage on our journey to the Father but on that journey to heaven we know we pick up many human infirmities and failings and when it comes a time for our going to heaven those faults and failings need to be put right we are forgiven yes by the Lord but there are some things perhaps that remain in our nature and in our hearts that need to be put right before we share the fullness and the joy of heaven and that is what purgatory is about and so we believe that there is that special place where some are called to go through that process of being prepared for the fullness of joy in the kingdom. Only the Lord knows who's there. Only the Lord knows about the holy souls in purgatory. But we know that they are our brothers and sisters. And so it is a great custom in the church to pray for the faithful departed. It was a great insight in the part of the writers of the book of Maccabees who said in the Old Testament that it is a holy and a wholesome thought to pray for the dead that they may be loosed from their sins. And so since our departed brothers and sisters are still part of the church, called by God to the kingdom, we must pray for them today. And as church family, that's what we do in this mass. We pray for the holy souls in purgatory. It reminds us too that we must live our life in preparation for the kingdom of heaven. And this feast day today calls us to live in holiness and justice and goodness all of our days because the time of our death is known to the Lord alone. And while we pray for our deceased brothers and sisters today, we ask the Lord to give us the grace to live our lives in patience and uprightness of heart and in goodness and in justice that when he calls we might be ready to answer and to be with the Lord who came to give us life, life forever, and who will remind us when we greet him that he is truly the way, the truth, and the life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the creed today we are reminded it's part of our faith that we believe in life after death the resurrection of the body and so we pray this prayer of faith aware of this great truth to which we are called we believe in one God the Father the Almighty maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ the only Son of God eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, one in being with the Father, through him all things were made. 
for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray with faith and confidence to God our Father, who lives forever and can do all things. He raised his son, Jesus Christ, from death. May he give peace and salvation to the living and the dead. That God may bring all Christians together in unity and faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may take the evil of war away from our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may show himself a father to those who lack food, work and a shelter, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our relatives and friends who have gone before us in faith may receive the reward of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again may come into the light of God's presence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who suffer from mental or physical illness may receive help and comfort, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all gathered here to show their faithful love may be reunited in the glory of God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's offer these prayers to our Heavenly Father through the hands of Mary, our mother, as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, hear our prayers for our brothers and sisters, and for all who have gone before us in faith to eternal life. Free them from all their sins, and let them share in the fullness of salvation in the kingdom where you are Lord forever and ever. Amen. The offertory begins the liturgy of the Eucharist. The bread and wine are brought to the priest who offers them on our behalf. Yeah. 
brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O powerful Father, may this sacrifice wash away the sins of our departed brothers and sisters in the blood of Christ. You cleanse them in the waters of baptism. In your loving mercy, grant them pardon and peace. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well, always and everywhere, to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. In him the world is saved, man is reborn, and the dead rise again to life. Through Christ the angels of heaven offer their prayer of adoration as they rejoice in your presence forever. May our voices be one with theirs in their triumphant hymn of praise. now the solemn reading of the Last Supper narrative and the mystery of the Eucharist. Father, you are holy indeed, and all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, by the working of the Holy Spirit. From age to age you gather a people to yourself, so that from east to west, a perfect offering may be made to the glory of your name. And so, Father, we bring you these gifts. We ask you to make them holy by the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. Gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all men so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. And in song we proclaim this mystery of faith. calling to mind the death your Son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and ready to greet him when he comes again, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. 
Look with favour on your church's offering and see the victim whose death has reconciled us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by his body and blood may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an everlasting gift to you and enable us to share in the inheritance of your saints with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles, the martyrs, and all your saints on whose constant intercession we rely for help. Lord, may this sacrifice which has made our peace with you advance the peace and salvation of all the world, strengthen in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Pope John Paul, and James our bishop, and all the bishops with the clergy and the entire people your son has gained for you. Father, hear the prayers of this family you have gathered here before you. In mercy and love, unite all your children, wherever they may be. Remember our departed brothers and sisters. In baptism they died with Christ. May they also share his resurrection when Christ will raise our mortal bodies and make them like his own in glory. Welcome into your kingdom our departed brothers and sisters and all who have left this world in your friendship. There we hope to share in your glory when every tear will be wiped away. On that day we shall see you our God as you are. We shall become like you and praise you forever through Christ our Lord from whom all good things come. The end of the Eucharistic prayer and we are invited by the priest to voice our agreement with what has been read. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Aware that we are God's family, that God is our Father who loves us, we now turn to him in trust and faith as we pray together the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray. Yes, Lord, we ask you to deliver us from every evil and to grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all unnecessary anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant to us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. And my brothers and sisters, may that same peace of the Lord be with you always. And let's offer those near us a, a greeting of peace. On behalf of everyone here, may I wish you the gift of peace that comes from our faith in the risen Lord.
Man is mingling of the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, bring eternal life to us. This is Jesus who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the Lamb of God who takes away our sins. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. As Father Ingris distributes the Eucharist to us here in the studio, we invite you at home to join us in a special way in welcoming Jesus into your life.
Christ is the fruit of your womb. Jesus, Holy Mary, Mother of God, grief for us sin is not, and at the hour Let us pray. Lord, in this sacrament, you give us your crucified and risen Son. Bring to the glory of the resurrection our departed brothers and sisters who have been purified in this holy mystery. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We ask you to bow your heads now and pray for God's blessing. In his great love, the God of all consolation gave man the gift of life. May he bless you with faith in the resurrection of his son and with the hope of rising to new life. Amen. Amen. To us who are alive, may he grant forgiveness and to all who have died, a place of light and peace. Amen. Amen. As you believe that Jesus rose from the dead, so may you live with him forever in joy. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace now to love and to serve the Lord. Thank Thanks you. be to God. Well, thank you for joining us this Sunday on the Feast of All Souls Day. May I on your behalf thank Father Kevin English, the choir, and the families from the parish of Maroubra. Well, we hope that you can join us on the first Sunday of next month when we have the Sisters of St. Joseph on the television mass to celebrate 100 years of their work in Australia. And until the first Sunday in December then, may the Lord give you all the help and strength that you need to carry you through troubles and illness, good times and bad, happiness and sadness. And now, as we leave you for another month, the choir will sing and the Father will dance as on a day of joy.
Let's go.